Okay, guys, uh, welcome to class. It's uh, week five, day two. Today, we're going to be building a tic tac toe game. And you can see that, what are we doing? We're playing tic tac toe. Why are we showing you guys this? The reason why we're showing you guys the tic tac toe game and we want us to do it is because this, this is the official uh, documentation of Facebook. They want you to understand these concepts to work with React well. And if we understand how to build this game, these will be the same patterns that we use all over pretty much every single React application that we work with, guys. Okay? It's the same concepts that if we can do the tic-tac-toe game, it's the same concepts over and over, over and over. But over the last couple of days, we've had a lot of questions about some simpler things. And before we jump into that, we're going to do a simple uh, demonstration application as well. So I hope by using this, uh, by doing this small application, we can all get a bit deeper understanding of state, props, when to extract out a component, and how to export and then import components for use in other files. Because you guys have heard us say this before, one file should never have one uh, multiple components. Should probably not have multiple components, and we need to import and export them regularly. So we can see that in this application right here, if we click the white button. The background turns white, the red, the background turns red, and the blue, the background turns blue. So let's jump into it, okay? So we're gonna do our standard setup, npm create, react native, or react, create react app. We'll call this npx. Oh my bad, MPX, okay, change colors. So MPX, create React app, change colors. <laughs> my apologies. Guys, I've been trying to think, something I, I think about you guys, what you guys say a lot. Last week I heard uh, the 80-20 rule. I hadn't thought about that in a long time. I think that if we do these, these exercises today and we fundamentally understand them, this is the 20% of work that we do that covers 80% of cases, okay? 80% of the time when you guys are programming, we're going to be doing the same pattern over and over. Fuck. Change. Change colors. Okay? So we're creating a new repository. It's a new file on our computer. A new folder. This folder has many files. Which one's the most important one, guys? Which one's really important? Yeah, but which files in here are important? In our uh, on this in this folder right here, all of them, right? But right now we're most interested in function or uh, app. Okay, so in order to get this example working, right here, I kind of just I turned it off. Uh, changing colors. Good morning. So just, hey, just to quickly talk again about what we're doing for those of us that are late. We're going to be doing the tic-tac-toe game today because this is the official, official guide of, face, uh, of React community. And it's going to cover a lot of the fundamental concepts that we need to really understand to work with React well. But because some of us are str uh, struggling and we've had uh, some other questions, we're going to do a very simple uh, application. This application renders a screen. The screen has three buttons. This button, well, these buttons, if we click them, they change the state of the application and thus change uh, the behavior of our application. Okay, so what, what we just did, what did we just do, guys? We just ran MPX, uh, create, react app, change colors. We moved into our project, okay? We opened up our code editor. So now we have it, right? If we do npm start now, we're going to get a message that says, do we want to run our thingy, our server, on a different port? And you can see that we can open multiple React applications at the same time. Port 3000, port 3001, port 3002. This is the default. We've changed nothing. 
Okay, so let's get going. Oh, also we're gonna cover styling a lot too. This is something I, have, I haven't I've talked about uh, deeply with you guys. So we're gonna mess around with styling. So just to make sure everything's working fine, we replace everything with hello. And we can see it on our screen, we see hello. Guys, stop, ask questions if you guys have questions, okay? Okay, so we're gonna add one button, we're gonna call it white. Okay, that looks good. Now let's add a div and we'll say um, class, class name equals um, uh, box style. Box style, okay? And what are we getting our styles from, guys? What file? Exactly. So we can jump over here. We can add a new box style. Say height, height is 600 pixels, width is 600 pixels. I did this wrong. What background color, guys? Background. Lavender. Background color. Lavender. Okay. So we can see a lavender, uh, a lavender box here, guys. Guys, we can see a lavender box here. We can see a white uh, button that says white inside of it. Okay. So how could we get this button that when we click it, change this box color? We have to think about this, guys. What's happening? What's the ultimate goal of when we click the button? The, in, the end goal is to change the color, right? How can we represent what color this box should be? Like, how can our, how, how can our application understand like what, what I am? So for example, all of us right now, we all have a, something about us. We're all at coder school. What what could we what we call could we call that? We call that our state, right? Our current state, our current location, the current location, the current state of our location is coder school, right? The current state of our uh, activities is learning, right? So state is where we are going to uh, drive this behavior. So. Because our app component starts off as a functional component, in order to get state, we need to refactor this. So we're gonna do class app extends react dot component. And you guys know this part, we add render, our render function, and our render function needs to return something. Okay, everything, nothing seems to have broken. So the next part we need to do is how can we change our state? Typically we use buttons, right? But in React, we have a couple different things we can do. Say again? Constructor. Yes, in our constructor, that's where we set up our state. So right now the, bo the box is lavender, right? Right here. So let's go ahead and set up some initial state so that we can properly structure our, comp our component. So we use our constructor. And we just set up the default constructor behavior, guys. This is what we have to do for every single constructor. So you do this dot state equals BG color. What color do we choose, guys? Lavender. Okay, so now we can see that everything seems okay. Now we need to make sure that this button, when we click it, it does something. How can we do this, guys? We can have an on-click event handler, correct. I don't know who said that, I heard someone say that. So in our buttons on-click event handler, we need to give it a function. And what's this function going to do? Uh, it's gonna fire something that sets the state. That up, Just that- question, sorry. Yes? Uh, why do you have props in the uh, argument of the constructor? This is the, the default we have to do this. These two, like uh, right now, we don't have to do it until we start like actually working in source code, but every single one will have it. We, get, we have to do that for it to work correctly. So we can do this.setState, it would say BG color is red. Let's just do lavender, okay? And let's just make the default color a different color, okay, so for clarity. So right now, the default color is red. When we click it, we want it to be lavender, okay? Okay? So we click the button, and we're not sure if anything happened yet, right? 
We don't know. So I think this would be an appropriate time to the event handler on line 17 to be extracted out to its own component because we need to add additional things other than one line. We need to add a console log because we want to make sure that we fire this, this function. So we can say this dot, or handle on uh, button click. Okay. So we'll do a console.log just to make sure that we clicked it. And then we'll copy out the this that set state. Now we can do this dot. Why does it keep doing that? On button click and we'll fire it. Okay. Let's make sure that when we click this button, we can at least make sure it's fired, guys. Okay, it's clicked, guys. So what do we want to have happen? Remember, the end goal is that when we click this button right here, right, we want to change this color. So where's the color coming from right now? It's coming from the CSS, right? Okay, so now our CSS, so now we have a couple different ways to do this, okay? There's a couple different ways to do this. I think the easiest way, though, is to add a new class right here. What if we had uh, a class called red, right? And we say background color, background color, my bad, lavender, right? Our color is lavender. So I, I promise you guys, if we stuck this right here, it'd be lavender. You guys see that from this class right here? Right? But we want to conditionally set this based on the state of the application, guys. So in our render method, we'll look at our application state. We'll look at specifically what piece of state, guys. We're going to look at our application's state of the background color. And from that, we're going to pass, use that data to stick something in here. OK? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, if this.state.bgColor is equal to lavender. What are we going to do, guys? We're going to say um, box classes. Box class equals pink. No, lavender. My bad. Okay. Now we're going to declare it up here. That looks good. Okay. So now, because we've on line 22, we've defined a new variable, guys. If our states, if our application state is lavender, we say box class is lavender, and then we're going to stick it inside of class name. Oops. But what happened, guys? What was the problem now? Say again, Kwan. Exactly. The original styling of the box went away. We didn't add that uh, box styling. So what can we do right here? Uh, there are two different ways to do this. At least two different ways to do this, guys. We could simply add right here, box. That's one way. Yeah, because, uh, because this is, remember, this is almost like an argument. The curly braces is almost like, a, uh, almost like an argument for our, uh, our React components. Okay, that's one way. The way that, so the way that we've also thought of is this way. And then we say box class plus equals. Isn't necessary to have a space after the box? Yes. Why do we have to have a space after the box, guys? Is this the same thing? Box, box, lavender. These are two different classes, right? So we do need to have a space because these are two different classes box so right now because we do it this way box lavender could work if we had no space but the thing is we want the box to have to work either way okay because eventually we're, gonna, we're about to make this more complicated so refresh what is our base what is our uh, default color your lavender as well right let's set it to red okay and now we have a problem that box plus equals lavender box Let's set this background color. Background color is, what's the color guys? Pink. Keep doing this wrong. Pink. Does it look good? Okay, so when we click this button now guys, 
what happens? When we click the lavender button, our button fires a function. This dot on button click, on button click, hard code sets the state to lavender. When our set state function call fires, our render function will fire again. And then it's, what's it do on line 21 through 23, guys? It looks at the current state of the application. If the current, st the current state of the application's BG color is set to lavender, we concatenate our box class with lavender, and then we pass that to the class name. Uh, we pass that to this div's class name. Does that make sense, guys? That make sense? All right, so let's test. So we refresh, we click the button. Okay, that seems to have worked. What happened, guys? Well, that's, these are problems. You guys are thinking ahead now, okay? Okay, I like it. We have problems. We do have a couple problems with the way this application is structured. But let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys. Let's just think about what every single step that just occurred, okay? Let's think about every single step that just occurred. We load the application, okay? Why is this pink right now, guys? When the application initially loads, right, our BG color is not equal to lavender, right? It is not equal to lavender. So what is box class going to be? when it arrives on line 30. What, what, what is box class going to be on line 30? When the, it's just going to be box, right? So it's just going to have this one class right here on the, on the right, OK? This is just regular CSS from HTML. I know that we said that we weren't going to talk about it anymore after week one, but we do need to have some, you know, some remembering of how it works. And if you guys want to do it just like, just like we do, uh, just like we've done in week one, you gotta just import the file right here like this. I'm sorry, I've shown you guys a couple of ways that I've gotten in the habit of doing it because over the last year, I've only built mobile apps, right? I've pretty much built only mo mobile apps. So there's multiple ways to import styles. This is the way that you guys should be doing it if you guys are on the web, okay? If you guys are being web developers. Anyway, so because our class's BG color is not lavender, box class is only a string that says box in it. We copy this, we paste it here, same thing happens, okay? But the reason why we use a variable, guys, why are we using a variable here? Be because this box, this variable will, will change depending on the state of our application. And that will, that will drive additional behavior, right? So you guys can see that right here, we only have one color. But imagine we had 20 colors, you know, 30 colors. What if that, what, how could we do that, guys? Could we just copy this over and over? We could, that's exactly right, we could do that. But would that be good enough, okay? What if the first one was, well, give me, someone give me another color. Turquoise. Tur, I know how to spell turquoise. Turquoise, is that a color? Turquoise, is that color? So we're gonna copy this. Okay, turquoise. I hope we have it, man. Okay, we have it. Okay. So now let's just get let's not even worry about three buttons, okay? What can we change now, right? I guarantee you when we click turquoise, the application is gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna change this to lavender. Right? So if I click turquoise, what color is it gonna change, guys? It's gonna change to lavender. Why is that? Because it's the same, it's the exact same on button click function, right? This, this is going to behave the exact same way every single time. So how can we make this function behave differently depending on its arguments, right? We can make this button behave differently depending on its arguments. So we can say color right here. Then we'd say uh, color. So what we do we need to do now for this application to continue working? Exactly. We need to pass the argument. Tur, tur, hoist. Man, you guys spell really hard words. I need to stop looking at your screen, guys. Okay, so 
This seems all right. Let's see what happens. Lavender, turquoise. Does it not have that color? Oh yeah, yeah. Good job, man. Thank you, Phil. Phil, Phil, Phil realized I made a mistake. So we have another problem now. Yes, we made our function call smarter, but we did not make our render function smarter. So we can do an else if, else if what? Else if what, guys? This dot dot state dot bg color equals tur tur turquoise. I don't know how to spell this. Okay. All right. So then, what do we do here? Box class plus equals turquoise. Is this gonna work, guys? Lavender turquoise. Five. We got a problem. I think I spelled this wrong. Did I spell this wrong? Hmm. I don't think it has this color, man. This is a plugin I have. This is a plugin that uh, that uh, gives us colors, but I'm not sure if we can just type in. Uh, fine, do blue, okay? Do blue. So this. Is Okay, so if we change this, okay, so, it, so, so the web does not default give us these colors. Certain colors we cannot have, okay? Sorry, Ray, I think, so, yeah. So we say blue here, blue, 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 okay? Because, the reason why that was is because, the reason why that worked is because this on the left, our React component understood the state. Okay, it understood the state about BG color or turquoise. It attached this class right here. This class is right. Uh, this class turquoise was found in our tor tor in our CSS, but the background color said blue. So it's a bit confusing. I know this is confusing, but that's that's why we need good uh, variable names, guys. So let's test again. We click lavender, changes lavender. We click blue, changes blue. Nice. So basically, right here, this is just a poor variable name at this point. A poor, uh, a poor piece of uh, piece of state argument. So we got to change this. Say, so say blue. Okay. Would this still? Would this continue working, guys? Will we refresh right now. No, no. We have to change the name of the CSS. Change the CSS turquoise to blue. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we refresh. We click lavender. We click blue. Okay, so right now we decide that we want to add 20 different colors, guys. Should we just copy and paste this over and over? What could we do? What's a better technique, guys? <laughs> We're not getting any elements by ID, their IDs, okay? Now this would be a good time to have a component, guys. And at, fir and at first, we're going to define this component in the same file, and then we're going to extract it. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way to the top. We're gonna define a new function. We'll call it const um, button color equals. What does this look like, guys? Just a function, exactly. And what are we gonna do? We're just gonna return a button. And I don't wanna type this again because I'm prone to error. So I'm just gonna move down here and copy it. Okay, so now we need to do something. Oops, but but right now this will not work, guys. Will this work? We made a function up here. What kind of function is this, guys? Remember how I told you that there's a couple different types of functions? Or not, not my bad. We're not having a function. What type of component? What's the, what's the type of component on line 14? Line 14 and line 15 are different because line five is called a functional component and line uh, 14 is a class-based component. So the difference between these two is that a functional component, some people might call them a dumb component, a uh, presentational component, but the difference between these ones is that the button color, it has no understanding of what this is. It does not understand what this this is. It, it, it doesn't have that type of state. But we can tap pass it props. Okay? So we'll chat we'll, we'll send this to props. 
But first off, I'm gonna do something much simpler, okay? It's just props this time. Okay, I'm gonna use it much simpler. I just got ahead of ourselves, okay? We'll, just, we'll send it some props, okay? And then we'll console.log props. No, I did that wrong. Props, okay? And we'll look at props. Can someone help me send this component of props? A prop, any prop? How can we send this component of prop? Say again. Well, let's just do let's just do this the simplest way. What if I what if we want to send a button color a property of color? Can we do something like this? Semicolon instead of equal. So right now let's just let's just look at this. Okay, we save the application. How many properties are we sending our button color? How many properties are we sending it? So we refresh the application. Oh, we got a whole bunch of other problems. Return. All right. So just return. Dev. Fuck, let's just return this. Okay, so everything looks okay. How many properties did we send this button color uh, function, a component? None. Okay, so how could we send this? Uh, this how can we send our button compo uh, color component a property? We can, send, we can do anything here, right? We can do age, age, eighteen. We send it an age. What are we gonna see over here in our console? Age. Right. But right now we don't need to send it an age. What do we need to send it? A color. We're gonna send it lavender, okay? So we we sent it lavender. It did in fact. Why was the number in a curly brace not just one string? Okay, so that's what that's kind of why I was trying to say that in the test yesterday. What types of data types can we send to components? We can send them strings. We can send them functions. We can also send them numbers. What was there a reason why the numbers specifically was in a curly brace? Like, why can't you just like not have a? Oh, because because if I send if I send age like this. Then the problem would be is it once once what data type would age be in the uh, the component whenever it gets the spots a string. a string yeah it would be a string. What about not having a string like no no quotations? Like yeah so so this is we send button color a a pop a pop age that is in fact a string, but if we do it without a string and we use uh, curly braces now that is an integer. So we need the curly braces to have to be an integer. Like no. You want to do it like this, right? Yeah. That's just not incorrect. That's not a correct syntax. Yeah. So ultimately, we could also do this. That could work too. We could do. We could send it in. We can send in a string. We can send in a property, background or an object. My bad. An object, right? We could also send in an, an object, right? What 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 is something that we always do this? What 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 property do we always send an object as its uh? as its argument. What is one of the uh, properties of a component that we always send an object? Almost always. Style. That's one of the most common properties. This is one of the most common properties that your components that you guys will see will have. Almost every single component we use will have a style. It will accept a style property. And it expects that style property to be of data type object. Okay, because remember, guys, this is data type object. What is this right here? That's a string. That is not an object. Okay, but what does the style property want? It wants an object. So it wants an object just like our set state. The first argument wants an object. Okay, this is going back to fruits. Some people like oranges. Some people like apples. Style likes objects. Okay, guys. Okay, so now. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Now we've officially figured out how to send our button color a property, okay? So how can we use this button color component that we've extracted out? So let's go ahead and investigate where we define it. So now we can see that 
when we when this component is rendered, we on its on click we render we call the function pops on bu button click, and then we hard code blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and test. I forgot, I kind of got distracted. Blue, and we can see that it's now complaining. Pops on button click is not a function. What's that saying, guys? Help me out. Pops dot on button click is not a function. Let's look at let's look at our button color. Pops of the button color on button click. So do, so what do we need to do here? If we look at our pops, let's get our pops real quick. Refresh. We only have one property, right? We click it, it complains. Exactly. We need an on button click property. We need to pass this property on button click to the component. Does that make sense, guys? So it, just how it's written right now, we have to have one. How this button is written, we need we have to have a property called on button click. Right now, we could do, like we don't have to have this right now. I could have just done console.log, clicked button. We could have done that right there. So if we refresh, we click it, we did click the button. But there is there's a big reason why we're doing this. What was the initial objective of the application? Exactly. So because although we have a child comp uh, component right here, when we click the button inside of the child, we want something to change on the parent, right? We want the parent's background color to change, right? We want the app.js, we want that component to change its state. So that's why we're going to pass our component button color a additional property. And what can we pass it right here that will change its background color? We can change it on button click. This is a function that belongs to the parent. And so when this function is fired and it says this dot change blah, 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 whatever will happen will happen to its parent. So we can do this dot handle on button click. Okay? But we're gonna have a brand new problem when we do this one right here. Does anyone know? When we pass the function this way, we refresh, we click, it's gonna complain. Oh shit, that's because I changed up here? My bad. My bad, I forgot to change back. Now it's gonna complain. What's it saying now? This dot set state is not a function. That is an indicator, right? That we've pop we haven't properly binded our function. It doesn't understand who our par the parent is right now. This right now, on line 24, it doesn't know what this is. Why is that? It's because we have not bind the, binded this function. So how many different ways can we do this, guys? What did we say on our test yesterday? Three. Three different ways. What can I do on line 39? I can make a fat arrow function here, right? An anonymous function, yep. Do this, we'll call it. Okay, refresh. Let's see if we can click it. Okay, so no complaint. All right, so now we're really close. We called the function on button click. We have passed the property. What do we, what, what's the next thing that we need to do, guys? We gotta pass the argument, right? This one is a little bit confused. I don't like the way to do this. So we can just say right now, we'll say uh, blue. Okay, we refresh. We click, that does work, right? But the, the objective here is not to have this button work one time and with one color. Remember, we want this to work with multiple color, guys. So when we go back to our on click in the button color component, we need to pass its argument as the color right here on line seven. So when on button click is called, right? When this function is called, called right here, pops.onButtonClick, it's gonna pass its argument, pops.color, to line 22. 
as the color. So let's go ahead and console.log. La 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 la. Color. Just to confirm that this argument did pass. So refresh. Click. And it's undefined. So now we have a brand new problem, okay? We have a bunch of problems, guys. I'm sorry I'm showing you guys, so, giving you guys so many problems, you know? Like, I'm not trying to. I just want you guys to be aware of the different challenges that we're going to do. You know, I want you guys to have the confidence in yourself to know that there's certain problems that are going to occur. And they're nothing special, okay? These are all problems you guys, we all face, okay? So we click it, and nothing seems to change. Our argument is undefined here. So for some reason, on line 22, on button clicked, when this function fired, color was not passed. Color was not passed, but it seems right here when we called props that on button click, props that color as the argument, we should have had a color. So let's copy and paste just to make sure. Console.log button color. Okay, props that color. So we refresh. We do have a color inside of this uh, inside of this variable props that color, but when we click it, it doesn't fire. It doesn't. It doesn't have that for some reason. And the reason why that is, the reason why that is. Is because when we fire this function on button click, that actually maps to this itty bitty function right here. That's this function. Okay? So we need to pass it one more time. Okay? We pass it, we save, we click blue. Oh my bad. What color do we change that to? Is that on the screen? Oh. I can't even see it. Yeah, it's so bright, so light. Did that work? Okay, that works. Do you guys understood what I just said? Slow me down, guys, if I'm going too fast. Yeah, can you repeat that part again? Okay, so when the component first loads and we render the button color, when our app component first loads, we render our button color component how many times? One time, right? How many, are, how many properties do we pass this, uh, this component? Two. What is one of the properties? One is color. One is on button click. Okay? So when the button color component renders, it has exactly two properties. One is color, one is on button click. Okay, this button click right here on line on line eight is not the same on button click as line twenty three. Guys, raise your hand if you understood what I said. On button click on line eight is not the same on button click on line twenty three. I'm going to prove that to you guys. Okay, we're going to change this this one on line twenty three to go. And then we'll change, we'll change this dot on button click to go, okay? So we'll save it, and we're not gonna see any behavior because we still didn't fix that original problem, but we can see that it did fire. Go did fire, right? Just test one more time, go. Okay, when we click this does go fire. How does it fire? When we click the button that's in our button color component, we fire a property, a, a function that was found inside of button colors properties on button click. We passed it a argument, the, uh, the color of the properties, the prop color, the prop color. When that fired, it, it fired this function right here, the one on line 40. And at this point, we need to pass the color because the color comes here and then it goes there. It goes into, it comes here. <sighs> Sorry. The argument to on button click goes into the left side of this anonymous function. Okay guys? And it's a color. And then we call this dot go with the argument of the color. And then that will fire. So line 23 will fire. So we save, we click, and it seems to have worked. Is that, is that clear, guys? Kind of clear, right? A little bit. Yeah? In the uh, there, yeah? Uh, the, uh, function, just, just understand uh, possible better. Can you change blue to 
Pops.co. Exactly. That's exactly what we're going to do next. Because right now that's been confusing a little bit, right? That's exactly what I want you guys to do. So do pops.color, refresh. So now, thank you, Phil, for helping me out. Now this becomes much easier to work with. So we can just copy this. So now how many colors can we have, guys? We have red. We can have blue. Is this gonna work now, guys? So we do red. Oh, did we did we fuck something up? Is working. Oh no, no, okay, because we didn't do the red yet. We didn't have to do the red. So we add one more here. Say red, red. Okay. So we click red. What? Oh, we don't have a color over here on the CSS. Come on. Lavender. Red. Blue. Lavender, red, blue. So can the Our conditional where? This conditional right here. Yes. What is a good use case for this, guys? A ternary operator operate only has two. Switch. I think a switch might be good here. So we'll do that. We'll do that one more time. Okay. Get, get, get box color. So someone help me out. How can we do this, guys? Switch this dot state dot color. Yeah, get the snippets, man. Case red, right? God damn, dude. How many colors do we have so far? Okay, so we have what? Red, lavender, red. Lavender, blue. So we just return red, return blue, lavender, return, god damn it, return blue, okay? All right, so how can this be smarter, guys? Can we just do let box class equals box? Box this dot get box color. Does that work? I think this will work. We did a uh, box, but, but the thing we, I use string concatenation. Why is this not working? Box class is not defined. That's I right here. Why is this working? Why is this working? Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, good job. Thank you. Does that work, guys? Oh, I fucked up. Fuck. Return. Return. Why is this working? We don't. I, I want you guys to know there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. And what's clear to you guys? I think style is kind of like the same as CSS, right? It's BG color here. That's the problem. Okay, what'd you say? Style, style is kind of the same as CSS, right? So I need style, color brace, and inside background color is this. Dot, prop, dot, color. Tell me what line you want me to change. What line do you want me to change? It's a whole nother way. This is one way of doing it. There are many different ways of doing this, guys. Okay? <laughs> okay, sometimes I, I, I like having big knives. What's wrong with that? Okay, so then we, so, so like, so now guys, I, I know that this is a very simple, stupid application. We're not ever gonna build an application like this. Okay? Yeah, but this is the fundamentals. This is the 80-20 rule, okay? This is 20% of the effort that's going to give us 20%, 80% of the results. How can I write a function that does this little itty bitty piece of thing? 
Okay, how can I write a function get box color that will get will will look at the state of my application application and just give me a little itty bitty string back? What does get box color do essentially? What is the purpose of this function? Like the the overall purpose? It's basically to get a color. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to get either red or lavender or blue, and then we want to stick it in another string, right? That's all we're doing in this string concatenation, right? And then we take that string concatenation, we set it to a variable, and then what do we do with that variable? That variable we pass as a class name to a JSX element. And then because of that, our JSX element will look differently, okay? So there are many, many different ways to do the same thing, but these are the, the, this is such a simple example right here. It, uh, basically like our, our state, right? Our state is actually driving the behavior of our application, right? Because if our state is red, then our behavior of our application is to show a red box. Does everyone, does everyone make, does that make sense guys? Make, raise your hand if that makes sense. Please, please help me, I'll give me some feedback. Raise your hand if that makes sense. Then, what are you doing over there? You listening? Okay. So, guys, I know this is a very contrived example, but but, but know that like this is how every application will work. Okay. And I know we've gone a, a little long on this, so now we're gonna do one last itty bitty step. Okay. We're going to extract out, and I'm doing this because a lot of us have asked how to do this correctly, and I've I've tried to stay away from it because I don't think that's what's what's important now. But in the very near future, we're going to have to know how to do this. And I, in fact, have asked this exact question before on an interview. I was like, how do I do this? I need to know how to do this. So button color, as you guys know, we should not be defining multiple components in one file. So we're going to do this one more time. We're just going to copy this component. And then what are you going to do, guys? We're going to make a new file. Exactly. Thank you. You guys are thinking. I like it. We're going to create a new folder called components. And inside components, Inside components, guys, we're going to define a new file. We're going to create a new file, buttoncolor.js. And guys, the name of the file, almost every single application I've ever seen, the name of the file corresponds to the, the name of the function. Okay? So we're just going to copy this over here, and jump over to button component, paste, and we need to do one more thing, guys. Export, exactly. Now this one's a problem. Okay, so it's saying that React must be in scope when using JSX. Basically, that means we need to copy this import because we haven't imported React yet to use in, in this file right here. Okay, so everything looks okay. So we exported right here, right? So how can we use this inside of our app component? Button. Color. From. And this is a relative path. Components. Exactly. So refresh. Doesn't the comp I didn't save over here, my bad. Oh no, Be it needs to have an export default. Exactly. But, but let's just pretend I want to leave it this way. How can we fix this import to make it work? I remember this is one of the questions I asked you guys. Exactly. It's not, that's not exactly what it means, but it's called a structure, destructured import. Yeah. So we, we add it in curly braces. That's all we do. And then it seems to work. Yeah. But imagine, let's just say someone comes to us and they complain. They said, hey, I like the way we import React from React. Can we do it that way? Right? They like the way line one looks. Okay, our boss is fucking complaining. He's saying he wants it this way. So how can we fix button color? Exactly. Export default. Then we need to just delete cons at that point. Uh, oh my bad, my bad. Cons. Then we and then we do. Exactly. Yeah. My bad. Sometimes I, I, there is a way to do this. Uh, I forgot right now. I can't. Sometimes it's hard to think on my feet. But now, so basically, instead of export up here, we we leave the way we define the button the same. Except now we do export default and then the name of the component. So we save here, we save here, and everything looks okay. You guys have any questions? Yeah. Now for buttoncolor.js, when would we know to change it from a functional component to a class-based component? When you guys start seeing, 
this is something that takes experience. I'm not really sure how else to, uh, I think that that's really what it is. It needs, a, we need a little bit of experience and we just get better at knowing which components need to understand state. Certain components will need to understand, it will have, have to have a sense of state, but some, some of them will not. So you're saying functional components will take props as opposed to class-based will take state? Yes, class-based components will be working with state a lot, and then functional components, we work with props only. We do, but there is no such thing as this, there is no such thing as state inside of our, uh, inside of our functional components. Certain components will never ever uh, manipulate data, okay? But certain components will manipulate data, right? And also, even if a functional component manipulates data, we can still have it manipulate its parents' data. So for example, our button color component, right? How does it manipulate data? It, it, it calls a property on button click, which is a function. It calls that function. It passes it an argument. Its argument is the color. When that function trickles up, I guess trickles up is the best way to describe this. It goes from this, this component right here, or it goes from this property to fire this function, and then this function fires which function? Go, in this case. It's a horrible name, but I want you guys to know that th this is their relationship, okay? It fires this function go right here on line 15, 14 through 17. It changes the background color. So, in that way, a functional component was sort of able to change data. It changed the state of our background color. Thus, it changed a little bit of data. It changed like red to pink to lavender to blue. That's all it did. But just know that the parent app is what's containing the data. That's what's holding all the, all the moving parts together. <coughs> Does that make sense, guys? Okay guys, so once again, just to recap on what we've done, we've figured out how, what the difference between a functional and a class-based component was. We've, we've also understood how to have conditional logic. Conditional logic dictate the behavior of our application. There's a conditional logic in this function call right here. The conditional logic depends on the state of the BG color. Depending on what that is, box class will be different. And then because box class would be different on every single render of our application, this button, this box right here will be different, right? Lastly, we understood how to pass properties to a child component. We figured out how to do that. We passed it a property of color and a property of a function. We, we passed it a function because we want this child the button color child, uh, component to be able to kind of mess with the state on the parent. Sometimes a child, if a user clicks on a child, we want that child to behave in a certain way. So we, for example, the child of our app component, one of the children of this entire app component right here is a button, right? Inside of this entire app component, we have a couple buttons. And because we want this button when clicked to change the app's, the app's behavior and state, we passed it a function on button click with a binded function call. The function call, same, you know, when clicked, it was used in such a way, when, on, when it was clicked, it called that function, it passed it the argument of the color, and then that argument trickled up. What's the opposite of trickle down economics? You guys know? Is this something? Basically the data rose. It rose from the child to the parent. The parent fired the function go on line 14, and then be because the line 14 updates the state of the application, everything starts over again. And then all the data is redone. And eventually, the most important thing in this application is box class will be different. It's either gonna be box space red, box space blue, box space lavender. But this is a very contrived example, guys. This is the, sim like this, the simplest example I could, I, I could think of that could show you guys this. And if we really understand this well, the tic-tac-toe game will be kinda easy. Almost all of it is very easy up until the last step. And I'm gonna try to let you guys do the tic-tac-toe on your own, follow the instructions, follow the readme and the documentation, and then if we st we're struggling, then we'll, go, we'll do an afternoon lecture again. But I want you guys to be able to read through the, read through the got lab and do it, because we're gonna be using the same pattern. Okay, guys? 
you guys have any more questions? Okay, guys, let's go ahead and uh, get on the start of the lab.